Okay, so remember from before that we had said if we have some application A and it's connecting over to application B, the chances are pretty good depending on how this was created that channel that application A has no idea how to talk to a middleware software, a message-oriented middleware software. So it needs this channel endpoint, which is a channel adapter. I'll just call it CA, so you know what I mean. If, if this is a little confusing, just refer back to this previous video where we talked about this. And that endpoint is something we'd already talked about called the client software. And that client, remember, is running WebSphere MQ clients, web, web, so WebSphere MQ client API. So that is running the library code. Look at all these terms, essentially all mean the same thing, right? All of this stuff, really all of this, is all exactly the same thing. Let's call it an, an endpoint to keep things simple. So the endpoint here is now going to talk to the queue manager specifically. And that's what, again, makes it client and server in this uh, particular usage of it. So this is, again, another term. Uh, the whole thing here is also called, you can sort of summarize it as one term, the MQI. What is the MQI? The MQI is one of the three major APIs, one of the three ways of getting the system, getting uh, your application to talk to this mom, right? This message-oriented oriented middleware with API. Uh, and the way this happens here is, first of all, let's look at the, at the diagram. Basically, if you've got an application here at the top, it's going to interface through the MQI in order to get to your uh, queue manager like we have been talking about and then once it's in the queue manager of course that's where it's going to find all of these queues and then do the work that it needs to do and there are some other pieces we'll talk about later process definition the name list object queue manager objects and so on but essentially your application goes to the mqi and the mqi talks to the queue manager then these things are actually called verbs so there are these things called major calls and minor calls major calls simply means they're more frequently used and minor calls mean that they're less frequently used we're not really going to cover that right now the important thing is that you need to know that the mqi is absolutely critical because the mqi is what connects you from your client application over to your queue manager and remember the queue manager is essentially the, it's the plumbing right it's 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 our message queuing it's it's websphere mq it is getting our application a to talk to application b so the mqi is absolutely critical and then separately when you look at the uh, mqi uh what it's doing it is calling or doing these verbs that we talked about through which programs can access the queue manager and all of its facilities there are structures that the programs use to pass data to and get data from the queue manager. And we'll cover this, we'll see what this looks like in a, in a second here, but basically it's one of the three sort of APIs, MQI. And then secondly, you have something called a standardized API or this is sort of a generic term, standardized API, which means that it's not proprietary to message, to, to message queue, to MQ. The, the MQI is proprietary to MQ, but you don't have to use it, right? You could also use JMS, which is the Java messaging service. And you could use IBM message service client or XMS. And that's essentially what it's saying here. Using standardized API can add additional flexibility when ac accessing services through a message queuing infrastructure. This book uses the term standard API to represent APIs that are not proprietary. Okay, uh, then thirdly, you have something called HTTP or what you probably have heard called a thin client, which means that if you're on, say, a, a smartphone, right, your, your, your iPhone or some Android device or something, and it, it doesn't have MQI on it, of course, and it, doesn't and it doesn't have these, probably, doesn't have these standardized APIs on it. It could, though. You could make that happen. But in a simplest case scenario, how are you going to get your, uh, your phone to talk to these queues? Right, there could be many applications for that. And the way you can do it is simply use HTTP, which is already built into the phone and built into much simpler uh, devices too. They don't even have to be as powerful uh, as, a, as a smartphone. And it just uses standard HTTP, which has get and post and delete, and will let you essentially bring up the do 
commands, you use these verbs to get and post information, to send and retrieve information from the queuing system. And just as a quick review of what that looks like, so if you have HTTP, you have these these what are called methods, and they are things that are very popular, right? Get, which lets you list out information, put, which lets you push information, essentially put information, or in this case, potentially replace the entire collection with another connection collection. You can post information and you can delete. These are the these are the four main verbs, uh, things that you can do uh, with HTTP in a restful environment. REST uh, meaning uh, essentially these these services um, uh, web services it's one of the two there's rest and there's soap and I, I will let you sort of read through that if you're interested but uh, in the case of this is soap this is, this is a kind of comparison between uh, soap and rest so soap is going to look something like this with Jax WS and rest will be Jax RS and this app server here is number one app server two and you're trying to get information from the one to the other um, essentially these are the two sort of web services that you'll encounter. And the point is that you can have these lightweight clients uh, get to the messaging system through HTTP standard HTTP. So at this point, you might be wondering, what does this actually look like in practice? Well, remember we had seen this MQI calls diagram where the major calls, so the mo you know, most commonly used calls here, one of these is MQCon. And what that's going to do is it's going to, it's your application using the MQI, MQCon, in this case that's the verb, to get into the queue manager and open up, well, not really open, but connect to the queue manager. If you wanted to open the queue, you would use MQ open. But in this case, you first need to connect over to it, and that's MQ con. So what does that actually look like? Well, if you, this is a sample program. This is written in C. You don't have to be a programmer. You don't have to really understand what it's doing specifically in code. But notice how it is using that specific verb. And it happens right off the bat. Connect the application to the queue manager. How is it going to do that? It's going to use MQ con, and it's going to give it the queue name. In fact, that's actually all this is doing. It's saying that the queue name is QMA, and it's going to use QMA um, as part of this connection over to the to the queue manager. And then separately, what's it going to do? You can actually sort of follow this. Uh, forget the code, really. Just look at some of what it's doing. It's using MQ connection. It's going to connect over to the to the queue manager. It's going to open up one of the queues. And sure enough, look at this, it's giving you the name of the queue. The queue's called Q1 in this case. And then it's going to uh, open, you can just read the comments, open up the input queue, and it's gonna do that with MQ open, right? And this time it's got Q2, so it's actually opening two separate queues, is a Q1 and a Q2. It's gonna put a message on the queue, and Q2 in this case, right? It's going to MQ put and MQ close. It's gonna close out the queue, which means that you can't use any more commands on it. And then it's going to get the message and get, we haven't talked about this, but get is the command that you use to take a message off of a queue and put it somewhere. I'll talk about that more later. And then it's going to close the input queue. So we did an input, you know, MQ open before, and this is another MQ close we're doing here. And then once it's all done, you're going to disconnect from the queue manager. So that's the opposite of MQ uh, con. This is MQ disk con really disconnect and the, the point really is just to see in practice that these are those major calls that some program is going to use and again what's the program well it's the endpoint it's the piece here in your application your application is using that library code the mqi library the api to go out to the queue manager and do the stuff it needs to do using those calls